Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of What's Next with Veronica. If you don't know what it is, you should because we're over halfway through with all of our interviews. But before we get started, you guys, if, you, if you've been here, you already know how I like to get started. I'm going to say a fun fact about the world, fun fact about myself. And I felt like my fun fact about myself got cheated in the last one. So I'm going to use the same one. If you missed it, then it's okay. So fun fact about the world. Since I'm a duck, we're going to do a duck fun fact. A duck cannot walk without bobbing its head. It has to bob to keep going. Second fun fact, because not everyone got to see it, is I'm really good at hand whistling. So that's it. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of What's Next with Veronica. If you're a stranger to this and you don't know what it is, it's an IG Live series where I go on with former student athletes to talk about what's next, their journey afterwards, and advice that they can give to the viewers, like me. So next guest, or this guest, we have Callie Curry, former Florida Gator, and now an executive at Creative, Creative Artists Industry Agency. Oh my gosh. Can you use that whistle to call a duck? You cannot. It's only used to like... I don't even know what bird, but we're going to go on live with her and learn everything that she has to tell us. Mm -mm. And throughout the live, I forgot, I forgot to pin it. Hey. Hi. Throughout the live, you guys can ask questions in the question box. My phone already knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Just living in quarantine. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> I feel like personally, I have no reason to complain, so it's all good. Yeah. Every, I'm just, you know, everyone should just stay home as much as possible for as long as possible until we're ready to get back out there. Facts. <laughs> so while we just started, you at Florida, All-American, All-Region, First Team SEC, you started every game your senior year, you are on academic honor roll got your bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism. You really popped off. I even saw in high school you were 13th in prep volleyball as, like, top 100 senior aces. Didn't even but, know that. Well, <laughs> now you do. <laughs> but you didn't – your athlete journey continued post-college. You went and played in Puerto Rico. I have to ask for my personal reasons. How was it playing in Puerto Rico? <laughs> um. Okay, so it, there is a huge difference from playing in college to playing pro. And I think you – I personally was not planning on playing pro at all. I had no aspirations to play pro. And then my senior year, we were ranked number one um, for probably like 90% of the season. Mm -hmm. And we got upset in the Sweet 16. And how we lost was like very traumatic for me. <laughs> and so I was just like, this cannot be my last volleyball game. And mm -hmm. so literally like an hour after we lost that game, like I remember in the interview, you know, post game interview, I couldn't even like speak because I was crying so hard. And so like an hour after the game, I remember being like, I have to go play pro for at least a year because this cannot be my last memory of playing volleyball. Mm -hmm. So I went to Puerto Rico and I got super lucky because one of my best friends from high school, um, she was actually on my high school team. who She played at Kentucky. She went to Puerto Rico with me. We were on the same team. It was great. And then she got fired two weeks into the season because she wasn't scoring enough points. And at that point, I was like, oh, okay. So, like, <laughs> this is how it works. And it was a fun. It was a great experience. I learned an incredible amount of Spanish because no one on my team spoke English. Um, I also was in Ponce, which is, like, two hours outside of San Juan. And, like, 90% of the teams are in and around San Juan. So, it was probably way different for me than it is for most people in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, I was supposed to come back for a second season. And like the week before I was supposed to come back, I was like, why am I going back? I didn't like it. So <laughs> I ended up not going back for my second season. Now that I'm 30, I wish I would have played for like five years. Um, mm -hmm. Just because you get to experience so many different cultures. Most of your contracts are only for a year. So you can go to from country to country. Um, now appreciating learning more about different people and traveling. I wish I would have done that longer. Um, but at the time I was just like, no, nope, this is not for me. No, thanks. But I do think when you're young, I also graduated high or college when I was 21. So I was super young. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I had some years to just do whatever. 
I think it's really hard to do that for 15 years unless your goal is to be like a coach or something involved in volleyball. I think I started getting worried about what am I going to do if I do this for 10 years and then retire? It's not like you're retiring from the NBA with millions or yeah. NFL with millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. So you have to figure out what you want your next step to be. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that go and do it and figure out a, a career path that works for them right after that doesn't have to do with volleyball. But for me, I was just like, I know I don't want to be a coach. I don't really enjoy it that much right now. So I only did it for a year, but I wish I would have done it longer. Yeah, they asked me, my agent was like, Puerto Rico is interested. And I was like, I need to get my degree first because they asked me in January since their season I left a little early. Uh, yeah. So I left school early, played, and then came back and finished. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> lucky. Yeah. I mean, but I only had two classes, so it was really easy for me to come back and just finish the last two classes. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But, but also, you... the Puerto Rico, the weather and all that, like, it's <laughs> no. dope. So I'm not saying don't do it. And you get paid a pretty, comparatively, you get paid pr pr paid pretty well for only like five, six months. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start thinking about life after vo volleyball? Like when you start thinking about, okay, I'm going to have to become an actual something. professional. Yeah. Something else. Um, probably not early enough. Um, I think about all the time I never did an internship. Like, I did absolutely nothing when I was in school except for volleyball, and I had a tremendous amount of fun in college. Um, so I don't think I really thought about my future until I was in Puerto Rico, and I was like, so if I do this, like, how many years can I do this for? If I retire, like, I don't think I thought about it until I got to that point. I think it's super smart to start thinking about it earlier. Even you doing this means that you're thinking about your future way earlier than I was at your age. Um, but I think that once you figure out that you can apply some of the things that you learn from being a student athlete into the working world, and as long as you can communicate that to the person who's going to hire you, um, then I think that you could use what you've learned through being a student athlete to get a position and then use it while you're at that position. Um, but it took me probably like a year to figure that out. And um, I went to grad school kind of as a buffer to try to give me two years to be like, all right, now I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it ended up working out really well. So uh, I, I got lucky in, in having the luxury to have two years to figure it out. Is that when you took your internships? Because I saw that you interned with Venny Magazine and then at Jeff Basker Production. Yeah. Is that during the time? Yeah. So during, while I was getting my um, master's, uh, you had to have like internships throughout. And then my last internship was with Slate PR. Um, and that had to be a full-time internship. So I went there, uh, it was in LA, and I interned with them for the entire summer. And then at the end of the summer, they offered me a job. So I ended up working for them for another like four or five months. And I absolutely loved it at Slate. Like it is a great company. My boss was amazing. She had really good clients, but I just knew that I didn't want to be um, a publicist. So it was, mm -hmm. it was good for me to kind of get out there and experience the entertainment world. And I realized like, I really like entertainment, don't want to be a publicist. And I think, um, and I've, my, my younger brother just graduated from college and he's trying to figure out what, she, what he wants to do. And he will be like, I think I want to do this, but I'm not sure. And I'm like, I don't think you know what you want till you get out there and start doing it. Yeah. Like I went to school for broadcasting and I did like a little internship with, I can't even remember what it was, um, but it was for football. And after like two weeks, I was like, no, I do not have the personality <laughs> for this. I'm not that peppy of a person. Like, this is not for me. I hate what my teeth look like on camera. Like, I was just like, no. So, but all through college, I was like, oh, for sure. I'm going to be a sports broadcaster. I love sports so much. And then I went and did it. Didn't like it. Then I thought I wanted to be a publicist, went and did it. And it's not that I didn't like it. I just knew it's not where my passion was. Mm -hmm. um, but through that internship and then eventually job, I met people at CAA and the owner, one of the owners of Slate or partners of Slate was her, his brother was a partner at CAA. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of like a, a connection that led me to going to CAA and interviewing there. And even there, I jumped around a few departments. And on your way up, because you started interning and then you started 
as an assistant, then you're a trainee and now an executive, what was the hardest thing you had to learn about your journey from the bottom to quite literally the top? <laughs> um, I think that, A, I can say in the entertainment industry and especially at agencies, being an athlete helped me so much because um, people can be harsh in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. uh, and especially the agency side of it. And like none of that phased me because like you think about like how many times have you been yelled at by a strength coach or your, your volleyball coach or, and so like getting yelled at at work to me was just like, okay, like whatever, I can hear what you're saying and do better next time. Where some people like aren't used to ever having that intensity of like, getting screamed at. So I think that helped me a lot. Um, the biggest thing I learned is I think that there's no task too small for you. Like you're not better than anything. If someone asks you to go get coffee, go get them coffee, go get them the best cup of coffee. You just don't know what like doing things the right way is going to lead you. And I think that you can't think that you're better than everything, than anything, especially in the very beginning, because you're starting from the very bottom. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I think that's something as athletes that we all need to learn because <laughs> we're so spoiled. So, like I go to yeah. Oregon and everyone talks about the gear and it's like I'm so used to it but that's not how it works in the real world. Like we're not going to be pampered with Nike Christmas no. every week. No especially going to like a big program where uh, I, I'm sure it's the same in Oregon like in Gainesville everyone knows you're a volleyball player. Mm -hmm. Everyone, So you go everywhere and people treat you the best and then you go from kind of feeling like you're on top like I can't imagine what it's like for football basketball and baseball players but you yeah. feel kind of untouchable to like now someone's being like hey go get me something go get me a fax go get me a coffee go get and you're just like okay but I, <laughs> I, I feel like there if you kind of put your pride aside and realize like okay this is what I have to do to get to where I need to go then it goes really really fast mm -hmm. incredibly fast actually I can't believe that I've been at my company for six and a half years yeah what do you, what exactly do you do at your company? Um, so I work for Creative Artist Agency. It's a talent agency. Um, we have headquarters in LA and New York, um, and we represent talent across like all forms of entertainment. So that's actors, actresses, musicians, athletes, nowadays, even YouTubers, digital. Um, I'm sure we have a few TikTokers now. <laughs> um, and even some brands we represent um, in our sports consulting group and social impact group. Um, and within the agency, we kind of try to be a wraparound service. So I work in the foundation department. So for any of our clients that want to do something philanthropically, people in my department help them do that and try to, try to help them make the greatest impact possible. I specifically work mostly with our sports department and our music department but there's one-offs through it like you just kind of have to pick up the ball where where it's been dropped yeah and knowing what you know now about your journey and about being a student athlete what do you wish that you could have done or what do you think what's something that you can tell current student athletes that will help them with their journey um Two things I would have done differently. One, definitely start thinking about my future way earlier, mm -hmm. not after I graduate. <laughs> um, <laughs> and two, I really wish, and I wish that my coach uh, would actually hear me say this, but I <laughs> wish that I would have um, done more as an athlete. Like, I feel like if I would have taken it a little bit more seriously, we could have gone further. Um, and that will always be a regret of mine because doing 30 minutes of extra work before practice and after practice is not going to hurt me at all. Mm -hmm. So I wish I would have done that more uh, to make me just a better player. But that's something selfishly that I wish I would have done just so that our team could have gone um, further. But um, as far as career paths, I just wish I would have thought about my future earlier and, and maybe like done more. Th like if I would have volunteered earlier with broadcasting, I would have known I absolutely don't want to do this instead of just being like, yeah, this is what I want to do and never mm -hmm. doing anything till after college with it. What resources did your school provide? <laughs> um, no, I feel like Florida probably has great resources. Um, did I use any of them? I kind of bounced out of Gainesville right after I graduated. Um, but I feel like with the alumni network that I know that we have, I'm sure there's tons of resources. I personally did not <laughs> use any of them. Fair. Fair. 
but I'm sure there's great resources <laughs> at Florida. We're going to open it up for questions. And let's see. We'll have this one. Favorite social impact project with CAA so far? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, what is my, oh, I know which one is. This is easy. Um, so Andy Cohen, he is um, a talk show host. He mm -hmm. does like all the Real Housewives franchises and does a ton of stuff with Bravo, um, even has his own show on Bravo. He, we reached out to him and have been, had been working with him to help pass the Child Parent Security Act in New York. And it took two years or kind of like a year and a half. But this past February, March, February, it was passed. So now surrogacy is legal in New York, where before it was one of three states randomly that surrogacy was illegal. And through that process, I just heard so many stories of like really terrible stories. Um, of women who have struggled to get pregnant, women who have had cancer and can't get pregnant on their own, um, and even uh, gay and lesbian couples that weren't able to obviously have a baby together and they had to go to other states in order to do it. And there's just things that happen through pregnancy that I know after having my child that you want to be there and be present for all those doctor's appointments and for the birth and not being able to do that in New York was very tough. So I'm Super proud to be part of the coalition and group that helped get that passed in New York with our client. Oh, that's amazing. Let's see. Ooh. Um, did you try? No, nope, these aren't. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I actually really like where I work, so I'm hoping that I'm still in the position that I'm in now. Uh, at my company, it's kind of weird, but they don't really have like different titles. You Once you're promoted to agent exec, that's kind of like the top level other than partner or department head. And I don't really want to be either of those. So mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that I'm in the same position, but just doing more impactful work with our clients um, and hopefully have more kids. <laughs> What is, I'm asking one because I'm not scrolling through these, okay. what is the best advice someone has given you in terms of your professional career? Yeah. Um, I think the best advice that I've gotten um, through my professional career is from one of my mentors who basically just told me never stop being curious. I think it's so important and I when I was younger, I wasn't, and I didn't read, I didn't follow the news, and now I consume it, and I'm always searching for different ways to learn, um, and I think that staying curious kind of keeps you on top of your game, um, and allows you to be in conversations that you probably wouldn't be able to, to participate in if you weren't um, curious, so I think that's the best advice that I've gotten so far. What would be the best advice that you'd give? The best advice that I would give is that, uh, I don't know how to say this, but basically like there's nothing that you can't do. If you figure out something that if you figure out a need that there's something that people would want, then go create it. There's nothing stopping you from that. And I think that people get really scared to go and do it. Um, but I think even if you don't have the resources, like people figure out ways and sometimes it's way harder for others and privilege definitely changes those things. But I think if you have figured out something and you have a passion, go do it. Thanks. And we'll do one more. How has your family influenced your career professionally? <laughs> um, well, my dad is one of the hardest workers I've ever seen in my life. Um, like even during this quarantine, the amount of zoom calls he's on with his coaches and I'm like you don't even know if there's going to be a season like you're going <laughs> way too hard for like an unknown situation um and so I think he is kind of inspired me to just never stop working no matter where you are in your career um because you can always get better um and I think with seeing my brother my husband my brother-in-laws just like especially my one brother-in-law Damian Lee and my husband um, Seth, they both started in the G League and, and didn't quit and kept going. Um, their perseverance, I think, is super admirable. And 
um, I think it just is a reminder to never get, get, give up because things can work out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank Reach you the time. I know there's a lot of questions, but we're not going <laughs> to get to them. But thanks for being on. Go get that headshot with your dad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for having me. Good luck with everything. Okay. Dun, dun. All right, guys, I know there's a lot of questions. Um, unfortunately, she won't be able to answer them. Thank you so much to Callie for being on and being a great guest. If you guys want to watch the full episode, if you came in late, then you can go on YouTube or we'll post it right away. Um, follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, if you don't already, to keep along and follow along with the series. We want to thank our partner, with Mobot First Foam Roll Water Bottle. If you want to go and get your own, you can go to their website and type in promo code What's Next to get 25% off. And then also, I know a lot of you guys are on Amazon because why not? There's nothing else to do anyways during quarantine. Next time you go on Amazon, do smile.amazon and pick the winning edge as your charity to donate. Next week, we're going to have four more episodes, Tuesday and Thursday. Tune in. We'll have more information going on about who those guests are going to be and more about them. So don't forget to follow along. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.